Well, here we are at the end of another week, and a man who is bloody but unbowed in, uh, uh, where are you living, Pat? Right beside Birch, the border Birch. there. Why, Birch, Birch. Uh, but, at Birch. But five bloody but unbowed. Explain to our, both our viewers why I say you're bloody but unbowed. Uh, I got my first um, vaccination yesterday. Judah, as we keep saying, the rollout in the south is considerably behind that in the north, but I haven't said it. Now, I don't know what yesterday, but Japers, um, a, a lot of people I know uh, have gone in and out in five minutes. I was standing for an hour and a half in a queue yesterday. Uh, it was really bad. It really, really, really was bad. Uh, Where were you? Were you standing uh, outside? Another yeah. Uh, it was, uh, there's a sort of a, I don't know what you'd call it, a sort of like a, a tunnel, like a plastic tunnel, and you got an in inside in the building. Now, I don't know what happened, whether there were staff shortages or or vaccine shortages. But anyway, I was supposed to be there. My appointment was 24. I arrived at half three, so to be early. Mm -hmm. And it was at five past five before I got my jab. Oh, God. Was it, good. Were so, by the way, I haven't said that. One thing as well. Now, by the time I got in under the plastic covering, I was grand. I'd only on this jumper. But there was a couple of people standing outside in the sturdy rain and they had, didn't have so like oh, And by the way, yeah. all these people are over the age of 65. Oh, so it was, uh, God, isn't that anyway. funny? Because yeah, both times we went, um, yeah. the the time of, I can't remember, say it was quarter to four, say. Um, yeah. We, like you, arrived at half three yeah. and we were taken immediately. Yeah. So we actually were out of there by about 25 to 20 to four. Oh, yeah. Five minutes before I, we were referred to. And a lot of people around here have had that experience. So I don't know what, one, it, it seems to be, Dude, it's, it's, there seems to be something going wrong when there's, there's big numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people around here have gone to their local doctor's surgery and mm -hmm. out in five minutes. So, oh, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. So, yeah. where did you get yours, Pat? Where were you? Uh, and Letterkenny, uh, at the uh, Letterkenny Institute of Technology. There's a big center there. That's, I, I there, was a, uh, no, there was a massive queue. Uh, so, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the system, uh, the staff look were brilliant. They were very professional and mm -hmm. very caring and very, very nice. So, I'm not having to go there at all. But I do think there's something wrong with the, the booking system. That's unbelievable. Because again, yeah. like uh, the people were really nice, really nice. Yeah. But they had you in and out in no time at all. Uh, 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 I, by the way, Jude, sta standing for an hour and a half, like I don't know, but I have a back problem. Uh, and when you're standing and there's no toilet facilities, no coffee, and no nothing, <laughs> you, you know, you're I, standing I for an hour and a half. You know, that, and by God, by the time I, by the time they said sat down there, Mr. Garden, uh, I'll give you your jag. I was really grateful. My back was feeling it more than my arm. That's right. And I find the same thing. I actually, uh, I don't think I could bear that. I mean, uh, leave aside the physical strain of standing, uh, which would be uh, considerable. Um, I could just get so bloody bored. Uh, I, I carry my Kindle. I, I'm like that as well. On, on such occasions, I always carry a Kindle. So I, uh, well, you know, I, I think I suffered for years from ADD. You know, so, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, okay. my exam results at school proof that. <laughs> well, let's talk about the exam results. I could, I could uh, teach a master class on how to fill exams. Okay, yeah. uh, let's have a look at some of the stories making the headlines this Friday. Uh, yeah. This one has been making the headlines, of course, and I'm sure our, both our viewers are pretty certain we'll start with it, and that is Arlene Foster. Ah, what Stick a woman. Transit, Gloria Mundi. Uh, exactly. On, on Monday, on Monday, she said that this was just another storm. Uh, what <laughs> Wednesday she was gone. Uh, she was. I actually early. I think it was Monday. She was actually uh, questioned by someone about. Uh, uh, was it Sam McBride said? Like over the weekend, they had sort of learned that there was uh, letters going around, or at least the potential of letters going around, uh, uh, um, and it was denied totally yeah. by Wednesday. Uh, she was gone. So uh, that's how. Uh, yeah, and it was done so brutally, so. Public. It was mm. you used the term decapitation. I think it might have been you. I read somewhere in a day. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, really, is, yeah. And it was a political decapitation. She oh, was yeah. Out so quick. Yeah. Yeah. No messing. I, the, yeah. the thing that strikes me is that nobody saw it coming. Like anytime people talked about an alternative to Arlene, they said, well, there is no obvious successor. And yeah. uh, then that was it. The actual yeah. fact is Arlene is gone and there still is no obvious successor, in my opinion. Yeah. The very same point. problems that tore Arlene apart will tear the next leader apart. Well, I think they'll even tear more. Uh, you tell me this. Why was Arlene decapitated? Was it because she wasn't uh, liberal enough or because she was seen as being too liberal? 
I would go for the latter. I would, oh, there, I, are you I, I, and, and that's almost a, an abuse of English language to, mm. to describe Arlene Foster as liberal. This is a woman who uh, said feeding crocodiles who refused to implement the Irish language and if you keep on going. Mm. But on DUP terms, she was very liberal. And, right. uh, you know, th th this is a woman who looks like uh, she she absolutely has abstained in that gay conversion ther therapy thing. Yeah. She, she even spoke up in Irish to somebody one day, Gora mm. and so on. Uh, plus the fact that uh, you know she seemed on a personal level quite a decent human being. Actually, but I think when you and uh, her her leaving speech was very gracious. But you, I don't understand this. Why do people like Arlene Foster and Peter Robinson seem much much more reasonable and human after they leave than when they're leader of the day? Arlene's leaving speech was very. We, there are people here who are, who are, uh, who are British, who are Irish, and all. Of, and she referred to, the, and she says, "We all have to love together." Mm. But if there was a wee bit of that generosity from the oh, DUP, it wouldn't it be a lot. Uh, wouldn't the atmosphere be yeah. a lot, lot different? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And in fact, that's the one thing that the DUP need. However, the front runner uh, is uh, Edwin Putz, the creationist. Uh, uh, exactly, he's a creationist. He mm. believes the Earth uh, was only on the go. What was it? Forty thousand. Years uh, 40, or so many years, I think, uh, like, uh, yeah, oh, no, yeah. not even 40,000, no, 4,000 no, 4, 4, 4, 4, years, years before Christ. Yeah. so 6,000 years in all. Um, and uh, somebody asked him to explain the Giants Causeway, which has been yeah. established as several million years old, yeah, yeah. and I yeah. don't think he got up with an answer. No. Now, there are people who say he's pragmatic too and clever. For example, yeah. there are people who say that uh, he had a visit somewhere in the south at one point and he spoke a few words of Irish. Uh, yeah. They say he's pragmatic when it comes to making decisions about things. But the fact of the matter is, Edmund Putz is an agricultural minister at present. Yeah. He's in charge of the border ports. Yeah. And the whole thing that the uh, people that were discontent with Arlene were annoyed about is that she wasn't tough enough on the protocol. She was beginning yeah. to make sounds uh, that she might even agree to some tweaks or changes or sandpapering or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that, uh, can you see Edwin Putz agreeing to some modification of the of the protocol? Not at all. In fact, I, I think he's in, in a deep doo doo if he even tries. The, the, the whole thing is that the DUP have sort of bound themselves into a corner, and which I think they're going to have real trouble getting out of. Like here, right, a quick recap. They made a total balls of Brexit. They ended up with the protocol. Uh, they seem to be at all at odds and ends on social policy about you know gay conversion and about abortion and about yeah. bringing and you know all. They don't seem to be cohesive in any shape or form, and I think they're going to have to make up their mind. Are they a religious movement or a political party? And I think the two, you know, um, I think Ireland towards the end found it almost impossible. But one other thing that strikes me as well, and I could be reading it wrong. Ireland seems to be not only just she's giving up the leadership. But it looks like she's leaving politics altogether. Yeah. And if I read a thing right this morning, she could even be leaving the party. I don't know. I think at the last bit might be a wee bit over the top. Mm. But uh, if she's leaving the party, that says something really, really serious, doesn't it? It does. Um, I, I don't know whether she will or not. I, I no, I know. Really, and by the way, I was just maybe it was the way someone was read out to me earlier on uh, by someone else. Yeah, I, I assume she's going to the House of Lords. And that's what I was presuming as that well. That would be very much in the tradition of, of the. Yeah. Um, DUP. But yeah. uh, this, as, they, as you say, you see, I, I, they're caught between a rock and a hard place, to have a cliche to explain it. On the one hand, they have alliance. Mm -hmm. And at present, they're bleeding voters to the alliance side because they're seen mm -hmm. as too, um, too what? Back, too stern, too uh, yeah, unfriendly, yeah. too, yeah. Uh, you know, traditional Regressive. unionist yeah. voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you use that expression? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. in the alliance, they're losing votes from people who are more open to change. Yeah. On the other hand, they're losing votes to the TUV. Yeah. Uh, and Jim Allister, which is really yeah. hard, right? So now it looks like, and this is a bit crazy, but it looks like they're trying to out, um, out right wing Jim Allister. Yeah. Which is really setting themselves a very, a very difficult I had to, uh, yeah. Uh, so so I, it's very difficult to know what they can possibly do. Might they, might they push things to the point where they collapse the executive? Jude, uh, you're, you're just exactly ahead of me. 
I, I, I was reading the other night, I saw it on social media, that there was one of a, a sort of a certain loyalist or unionist type guy saying, uh, they need to sort of bring down this whole edifice so, you know, and so on. Now, this was uh, one, of the, one of the alleged smarter guys I was reading. And I was thinking to myself, if he is serious, this guy, that they bring down uh, Stormont, I would think there are people in West Belfast and, and the Bogside and Derry and uh, Coal Island and Newry and anywhere else saying, go ahead, be my guest. Because if they bring it down and direct, now that's the, by the way, if they bring it down, that's a good Friday agreement over. And they bring mm -hmm. in direct rule, which is what they'll have to do, mm -hmm. because the, the, it won't go back up again. Uh, then for every nationalist, it, it's, if you're an, sort of intent on promoting unity, no better thing for any nationalist, because most nationalists are going to sit down and say, look, wait a minute, I might have been happy enough to live in Northern Ireland, but I'm not living under a British citizen out of Europe with my rights and my sort of identity totally, completely and utterly ignored by yeah. people who just get their own way every time they don't get what they, yeah. what they want. But you see, well, yes, that's true. Um, I, I would assume that the DUP could work that out as well for themselves. Uh, but... Um, you think you think that they they wouldn't have figured that out in advance? I have a feeling. Sometimes I, I feel know. that they would may push it to the point where they're going for a border poll. But they've always insisted. The DUP has always insisted that they wanted to have devolution. Yeah, they weren't for Westminster rule. Apparently, the first thing that Ian Paisley said to Martin McGuinness was, "Look, mm. Martin, we can make a better job yeah. of this place yeah. than, than any." And and apparently, Paisley detested a lot of the British ministers that came yeah. over here. I mean, mm. like it's on the records now. I'm not making that up. So, yeah. like, uh, if, if they're following in the footsteps of Paisley, and I heard uh, early on, she said, even during COVID, devolved ministers had made a much better job of it over here than any sort of flying in and flying out British minister, mm. uh, a sort of disengaged minister would have done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, which is true, by the way. Yeah, I, I've said before, as I've said before, and I said again, mm. the only thing that will block a border poll, that will stop a border poll happening, and I would say and say the next five years. I definitely would say and say the next five years. Well, only thing that will stop that is if unionist, unionism finds a way of making a fair number of nationalists reasonably happy with the way things are. Yeah, which is uh, what Peter Robinson said. Yeah, yeah. But but the that, fact that, that that's, matter, not, that's, not, that's not that's not that's not. But you, that's not happening. In fact, that the opposite's happening. Ah, exactly. Like uh, you know, you turn around and say. The nationalists are getting everything. Look, dude, when you're talking about a police force that you know uh, uh, still way, way from one side of the community, when you see uh, you know Starmont being you know most of the sort of benefits going to unionist areas, not nationalist areas. See that, that by the way, some of the stuff that's been coming out in the media, you know, about two tier policing and this absolute rubbish. You no, know, they're, they're the victim community, uh, the DEP are spread and and the loyalists are spreading as absolute rubbish. Go, if you want to real, get real poverty and real deprivation, go into the, the bog side, go into the Gallia area of Derry where there's 60 and 70% male unemployment. So mm -hmm. don't give a, you know, that rubbish. And Belfast for years, they, you know, the only place, like they had what? Shipbuilding, Harden, Wolf, uh, Mackey's and so on. Okay, some of that's gone now and then switched mm -hmm. the other way. There are a lot of Catholics who've got educated. But dude, that was those were choices made by unionism and by lo loyalism. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, uh, I think most people will be agreed that uh, there's a need to make nationalists happy if Northern Ireland is to survive. Yeah. But uh, does Edmund Putz look to you like a man who would make nationalists happy? You don't, to Absolutely me, he doesn't look like a man not. who would make himself happy even. Never no, mind uh, nationalists. Uh, look, I, dude, maybe we're mis, uh, misleading in terms of understanding the man. Uh, like, but he's a creationist. Some of the stuff he's done so far, he refused to attend a North South meet, meeting. Now, Jude, by the way, there's going to become an issue for Sinn Féin version. If, and the Irish government, of course, if the, the unions stop attending North South meetings, what's the point of the Good Friday Agreement? In other words, we're back to internal uh, settlement again. And the message, and I think um, Michelle O'Neill and Mary Lou McDonald are going to have to make a decision. If this continues the way it's going on, then the, the unions refuse to uh, accept that there's an Irish dimension to all this. They're going to have to make a uh, decision. Mm, well, I'm not sure I'd put a lot of weight on whether or not there are North South meetings. I mean, there were uh, North some, South some, meetings. Some, some I, some, I, but I, there's a legal agreement. That would have made a bit of difference, Pat. That would have made a bit of difference. Uh, uh, I, but if, it, if it's a policy, I, I would think then, well, mm -hmm. so, well yeah. what, what's on it for, for Sinn Fein? In other words, uh, the, yeah. the, 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 
uh, Westminster can come in here and uh, keep on doing whatever, but the Dublin government, who, who, and we have 50, around about 50% of the population, mm. our 50% doesn't have any rights or uh, any representation and, at government level. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think, uh, do you, why do you think that uh, Edwin Coots was chosen? Well, because well, I, I, know, I, I, we know that this is, to get the job. Uh, I, no, this is home, home, uh, home based psychology. But I, I think when people start getting f f scared, you know, they they, re uh, they they sort of revert to sort of old fashioned, you know, values and puts um, sort of sort of would represent the old style DUP when but we had it so good. But you, they seem to they seem to ignore the fact that times have changed. Even ah. if Paisley came back to Mara Martin, he could not lead them back to what they were in the in the, the 1970s. The population has changed. The demographics have changed. The, you know, the politics have changed. But surely they can see, as Peter Robinson saw, and some others, to be fair to them, some other unionists have seen, that the only answer to uh, a border poll, to blocking a border poll, is to make a state in which everybody feels reasonably happy. Now, yeah. to do that, you've got to have policies and people that are moving that direction towards accommodation yeah. of those who differ from you. Now, they've done exactly the opposite. Are you saying they did that because they were frightened? Uh, or do, have they not thought? Do they did not realize the need for the making of uh, uh, nationalists? Dude, no, no, no one said that the you know, last thing that DUP are great negotiators. Well, we've just, that's that's been debunked massively. Mm -hmm. and, and see the strategy. Dude, if they were really smart, and it doesn't take Einstein politically to figure this out, if uh, you've uh, got a declining number and you want the union to stay, you want to live as part of Britain. The way you do that is see those moderate nationalists, reach out to them, to, to give them, make them comfortable within the Northern Ireland. Uh, you know, as long as the constitutional position doesn't change, you can give them anything they want. Mm. You're still part of Britain, but hey, let them have their Irish language act. Mm. Let them have their street names in Irish. No, big deal. So it's purely simple. It's well, if the, the constitutional are, page, but, uh, but, but the constitutional position hasn't changed, and that is the big prize for unionism. They are not doing that. Yeah, but I think they believe, and I, I would tend to agree with them, that there's certain things in advance of a border poll, and the, you know whether people want to change the constitution or not. In advance of that, you can set up favourable conditions one way or the other. And if you what set do you up mean, conditions, what do, you, what, well, do you, what do you mean? Well, I mean that if you set up conditions whereby uh, nationalists, Republicans are really fed up to their back teeth with the way that they're being regarded by the unionist side of the house. Yeah. They're going to vote in, vote in favor of United Ireland. Of course if on the other hand, as we say, if they find that nationalists, if soft nationalism finds yeah, that yeah, the yeah. UP yeah. and others are reasonable people. For example, why yes, wasn't Je Jeffrey Donaldson? Now, I mean, I, I, I could go on for some time, but Jeffrey Donaldson, but why wasn't he chosen rather than Edwin Putz? As, as a figure, there's no doubting his unionism, yeah. But at the same time, you can see, I don't even have to explain to you, you know almost yeah. intuitively that he's a, a more user-friendly uh, DUP yeah. figure. So yeah. why didn't he choose him? No, no, no uh, uh, Jude, if you listen to Talkback, uh, you, you listen to Sammy from Portadown and somebody else, you know, Ruth from Balamina, they want to go back to, uh, you know, the, the, the real hardline DUP people, people like Jim Allister. Jim Allister seems to think that nationalism should have no rights in Northern Ireland. We are British. And like like it or lump it. That day, uh, Jim might be a very smart guy, but that day of, is long gone and it ain't coming back. And uh, dude, I don't know how you explain it to him. And when you listen to, uh, as I said earlier, but talk back, there are people going back. Dude, they don't belong to the sort of the 21st century. They belong to about the 18th century. Mm -hmm. That there's sort of, uh, as Martin McGinnis actually said to me one day, they, a lot of these people think they own the hotel and we're the guests. <laughs> You mean the you mean the scholarly staff? I will. I will. Well, I, well, I, well, I, I think that's what he really meant. Yeah. Right? Like the, he said the guest, but yeah, yeah. they won't know to tell, but we're the staff. I was thinking. I was wondering if, in fact, given that Puts is the agriculture minister, and given that he is in charge of the border ports, might it be possible he would deliberately flout any and make no arrangements? In fact, sub, uh, sabotage any arrangements for checks of goods coming in from Britain. Bring this whole thing of the prodigal to a head, uh, have civil disorder among working class unionism or loyalism, and you know bring things to a point where there's a degree of violence, and the British government has got to give them something to get that calm down. Is that true? Uh, uh, I'll tell you that is one hell of a high wire strategy, 
Well, I wouldn't go down that road. No, Judy. No, I. Of course, they could do it. There's no, no. But I hate Jude. Uh, the old traditional unionists, uh, they, they portray themselves as being law and order people and so on. And they have always said that they, they have no time for this sort of law breaking. If they go down that road, they are on a path of confrontation with the British government and with uh, the, the nationalist community. Mm -hmm. Jude, there's, I honestly believe there's Northern Ireland fatigue at Westminster. They are just pissed off. You know, the DUP had their day in the sun and balls it up at an amazing level. Mm -hmm. And they're paying the price of that now. They're lashing out at everyone else, you know, for what they've done. Yeah. They delivered the hardest of hard Brexit for Boris Johnson, and then they got screwed. Give us a, here, give a, us a prediction before we move on from this topic, this fascinating topic. How do you see things in six months' time, assuming that Edmund Putz becomes the leader? How do you see things in six months' time, or even in a year's time when there will be uh, elections? Yeah. Well, dude, here's, I'll answer it this way. If he behaves as I think he will behave, uh, there will definitely be an election within six, eight months. Uh, definitely. And well, if they go to eight, it, Pat, if they go to eight, they'll go to 12. You know, uh, okay, okay, yeah. it doesn't matter. But you, uh, and I see if there's um, sort of tension on the streets and sort of red and, and so on, and they refuse to implement the protocol and so on. Jude, we're on a very, very slippery slope. And I think uh, Butch has to go down that line because that's the card he's played so far. Well, you know, I, I think you may be right. But uh, in fact, I also see uh, the southern government, and that's very important to Sinn Féin, the southern uh, ministers in the government they're being sympathetic towards unionism and Always doing things, making arrangements, even it might subvert the protocol to some extent yeah. in order to calm unionism down and to allay unionist fears. You know, yeah. see that? Oh, yeah. These are the people I'm that you elect, to, I, do, people like uh, you uh, elect these sorry. people into power. In the uh, uh, Jude, I've seen them doing it, but Jude, they can only go so far with that. You know, parity of esteem does kick in. And, you know, and as well as a, a lot of them, hey, Jude, if the Sinn Féin get a massive vote in the next, uh, uh, what I'm saying is right, comes to pass, yeah. that Putsch creates a suggestion that uh, uh, Sinn Féin pull out an election and Sinn Féin get a massive vote, the Dublin government is certainly in a bind end and your scenario is going to be very difficult for them. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an interesting year if we can Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I have a suspicion, you know, that uh, having uh, puts in the saddle will push things towards a crisis pretty rapidly. Yeah, uh, I think so too. But, but, but then again, I keep thinking, well, you know, they need- Well, to unless he's far more pragmatic than we both give him credit for. Well, you see, on he's his, smart. On, on his case smart. history so far, there's no, no evidence of that. Yeah, I mean, his lines on gay blood and uh, ah, sexuality yeah, yeah, and-, yeah, yeah. and hey, remember, uh, remember the time he came out with a thing after COVID raged, started to rage, and he said that in nationalist areas, there were six times as many instances of uh, yeah, COVID yeah. as there was in unionist areas. Uh, yeah, like COVID was a, was a Catholic disease, uh, uh, a Catholic uh, virus. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Having having now lashed um, yeah. the DUP and Edmund Putz and all his works and bumps, now let's turn to the <laughs> situation of Sinn Féin in Derry. Now, I'm only realizing this, well, I sort of knew that they hadn't been doing very well. But I was amazed when I looked at the figures and I found that Alicia McCannion lost her Westminster seat by 17,000 votes. How did that happen? 17,000. 17,000, and they lost five councillors in the Derry Strabane local elections. Which Do you know what you won by, Pat? Do you know what you won by, by this matter of interest? I, I think or or no, Jude, I think she had nine thousand uh, uh, majority the first time. No, Something I like can't. that. Uh, you know, it's quite. A, I was, no, Jude, I'm open to correction. That's yeah. uh, uh, That's just coming off the top of okay. my head. Okay. But uh, but anyway, it was a massive swinger. Yeah. I knew a couple of SDLP people, and um, I remember talking to them about a week beforehand. I just met somebody. Um, yeah. And I, I said, Go on, you've got friends, lots of friends, friends in the SDLP. Friends, yeah. friends in the SDLP. Yeah. Anyway, they said, ah, Pat, be very, very tight and so on. And in fact, I met one woman, uh, Lillian Shinoi Barr, who's involved in the SDLP. And I met her the day before and I said, how are things going? She says, oh, it's going to be, I you know, she said, Pat, we just might um, squeeze it. <laughs> and I, 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 on the night of the count, at about two o'clock in the morning, I, I, Jude, I was in my bed, but anyway, I got up the next morning. He won by 17,000 votes. Now, Jude, uh, Colin Beast, what we're chatting about here. Yeah. That, that, hey, that, Jude, it's been coming for a long time. Why? There's Why? A, right. I'll, I'm not going to name names, but okay. here's a very simple uh, illustrative story. 
I was in Capital Moore Sports Complex in Derry to keep my felt body in the shape into which you can see. <laughs> and I met a well-known farmer, retired school teacher. Nice yeah. looking, one of the most respected people in Derry, a man of the highest integrity. Hmm. And I knew he was an avid, uh, steadfast, Sinn Féin type guy. And I said to him, I said, uh, you know, just as a joke, well, I presume you'll be voting for me, Kyle, next Tuesday, wherever Dad was. He says, Pat, I would vote for Gregory Campbell quicker. And I said, are you serious? And then, and he, he started listening about all the different things. He said, basically accused Sinn Féin of nepotism on a grand scale. He said they made Fianna Fáil look like beginners in there. Uh, uh, Every key public community position where they could control it, they had their own people in. And unless you were a, a relative or someone, that certain small families were making all the decisions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. And his detestation of Sinn Féin, and I, by the way, I am using that word, he detested him. Now, but this he was, is a you guy, say he was a Sinn Féin man himself? Uh, he was, yeah. Uh, well, uh, a supporter, he wasn't actually an activist. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he was, uh, like, I knew him for years. Yeah. And uh, he was, uh, you know, a very sort of, you know, a very moderate man, but, you know, he had uh, fallen out uh, with the uh, SDLP, he thought they were weak in water, you know, yeah, type yeah. thing, when it came to the national question. And he was not a violent supporter. He was just one of the ordinary, decent people, so on. And I thought... You know, by the way, he's, I'm just using him as an example. I've met others saying exactly the same. And I have friends, if you talk to some of, I was up in the Craig and um, at a shopping center, a couple, and I met a couple of guys, and they were saying, I said, Pat, what's going on? It's crazy. And there was a certain well known personality in Derry some years back I met at, a, at the gas yard failure. And I was chatting to him, and he said, Pat, do you realize it is now worse in Derry than in the old days? Uh, nepotism is now worse than the old days of the official unionists or the Ulster unionists. And well, he says Sinn Féin, and he says these are the people who said they were they were going to be different. Yeah, I, I must say, and I, I thought that this was a person who was just uh, exaggerating. For my last the last book of interviews, I yeah. I interviewed a guy who's uh, well known around Derry, and you'd know him yourself. Yeah. Uh, and he said he just in passing he said, "Ah, oh, there's things in this town you need to be a shinner to get a job, nearly." I think and we're, I, I, I think we're, well, I think we're, I think we're talking about the same. I'm think we're talking about the same man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So they, they, I looked at the, uh, some of the quotations from Sinn Fein, sort of the headquarters, mm. as it were, yeah. uh, and they quote an anonymous source as saying there was a, in Derry there was a core group making decisions about controlling power as opposed to progressive politics. That's yeah. it's almost I can hardly believe that. I mean, we're talking about Derry where Martin McGuinness was such a figure uh, yeah. and, you know, attracted so much support. Yeah. What, what, how could it possibly have gone wrong so quickly? Is, doesn't Sinn Féin have any monitoring systems to see what? I, I don't know. Jude, you, by the way, we need to put on it. They're, they've asked Martina Anderson and Karen Mullen, the two MLAs, to step aside. Hmm. They, uh, they want the entire leadership to step down. This is not minor surgery. Now, somebody, some people are very cynical and saying who's in and who's out. But let's see. If the two of those people res uh, resign in the near future and there's a whole new uh, um, cadre comes in, like it shows how serious Sinn Féin have taken, taken the situation. Huh. And by the way, Jude, it'll take a, a generation for them to get back because well, they are detested in Derry right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I suspect that they, they, they have taken a sweeping thing where they're going to uh, you know, have people like Martina Anderson removed uh, because they don't want to be seen to be piecemeal. They know no. that uh, Sinn Féin have been a total rocks off the whole thing so yeah. they, they want to say okay well we're not picking and choosing here even people who have served the party well over the years we have yeah. to have a clean slate so yeah. to suggest that they're really thoroughgoing and this is a new Sinn Féin you're going to see uh that I that's the way I would read it but I mean uh, it seems just impossible that it should well, well, that when, when Martin McGuinness was in charge hey, Derry Sinn Féin he could throw a lot of things out, but there was no corruption. There were, well, maybe there's a bit of nepotism, but Martin kept, ran a very clean show. Like Unlike Belfast, there was no drinking clubs, there was no drinking dens, there was no uh, messing around, there was none of that sort of stuff. It was all, and you know, even the good middle class Catholics saw, could, had no bother voting for Sinn Féin. Now, th now there's a core uh, Jude that'll vote Sinn Féin come hell or high water. It's not, mm. That's not going to change. There are certain parts of Craigan and the bog side. Uh, Sinn Féin could do whatever they want. Mm. People say, but know the people that they need to get up to that level. Derry was usually a nasty LP city, but uh, in recent years it had switched to Sinn Féin. Mm. But now there's a massive switch back to the SDLP. And by the way, it's not that the SDLP are that brilliant. 
it's because Sinn Féin are bloody awful. Mm -hmm. It could be, you wonder what it'd be that, uh, you know the way everybody said that uh, John Hume was a one-man band and he didn't yep. provide for his successors and the signs yep. were on it because the SLP fell apart uh, and in Derry it was everywhere else. Yep. Could it well, be Mark that Durkin had a good, a good, a good be wrong with... Say again? I'm saying, could it be that Martin McGuinness didn't make provision for the people coming after him? Well, you see, if Martin was such a huge figure uh, that yeah. it's hard to say, you know, when, when Martin said something had went. Now, Raymond McCartney, who was also a well-respected figure, Raymond's a guy I would know well. Raymond also retired. Like, he, But he should look at, um, what do you call her? Um, Martina Anderson, Karen Anderson, Karen Mullen. Uh, I, I, I could be wrong here, but I think Karen Mullen, who the other M MLA, is yeah. Martina Anderson's niece. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, talk about keeping it in the family. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Yeah, well, the, the, the DUP used to argue that uh, keeping them in the family meant that uh, you could be sure of their loyalty and so on. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I don't think it's, it's like it's like the Fianna Fáil guys down south who always made their wife their secretary. <laughs> oh well, I, she's always available day or night. Yeah, yeah and that the forty thousand salary had nothing to do with it. Okay, before I leave this one, Pat, I'm going to ask you again. Do you think it's possible that Martin McGuinness made the John Hume mistake? That is, that John Hume didn't provide for the next generation coming after him. And as a result, for a generation, roughly, uh, not a generation, 20 years, 15 years, uh, the SDLP was a shambles. And now it's the Sinn Féin's turn because maybe Mark McGuinness didn't make provision and they're going to be a shambles for the next Yeah, I think years. Uh, no, there's two things I'll answer th this way. But yeah, to answer your question, but two things. Martin... I think got uh, the, the fall of Stormont, you know, uh, Martin wasn't so, un, so engaged and, uh, the, as Deputy First Minister. And secondly, he got ill. So I think he took his eye off the ball. Like, dude, this just didn't happen yesterday. This mm. has been coming for five, seven years. Mm, mm, mm. Well, uh, I suppose the consolation for people like ourselves... Uh, dude, it just didn't happen five, seven years. We're talking about 10, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. St. Peter are quite open about that. Now, certainly the yeah. quotations I was reading today... Yeah. They didn't attribute who said them, but they were yeah. saying they were senior figures. But it shows how serious the headquarters has taken this to. But you this see, is pretty serious. It Root has knock-on effects. It has knock-on yeah. effects because there's, they're doing so well in the south. They're doing yeah. so well in Belfast and so on. So they've got to be very careful that this contagion doesn't spread. So I suppose, yeah. as you say, it's radical surgery. Okay, mm -hmm. let, let's go to a final story. <laughs> Actually, it's not a story at all because it's a, a, a reheated version of what we see every well, every fortnight, let's say, yeah. in the Irish Times. Today in the Irish Times, Stephen Collins, <laughs> no relative, yeah. I repeat, no relative. Stephen no. Collins has a column in which he says that, um, uh, that Matt Carthy has really shown himself up by uh, praising Seamus Michael Wayne, who was an IRA man who was killed by the SAS in 19-something or another. Uh, and Collins is quoting Arlene Foster, as believing firmly that Seamus Michael Wayne was among the men that attacked her father and nearly killed him. Um, yeah. has, he, has he got a point? No. Dude, I, 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 this, that, no, no. Well, I am not saying that uh, Michael Wayne is um, whatever, whatever. Here, let me tell you something. People like Stephen Collins really annoy me. Right, Jude, do you know, have you ever heard of sort of John Martin, Brian, or Anthony McReavy, or Reavy? You know, the three brothers shot dead by loyalists. There, there's Colin uh, McCartney, and I can't. I think his name was Sean Farmer. Two boys shot dead in the middle of the road in the middle of the night. And there was James and Gertrude Devon and their 17-year-old daughter shot dead. Have you ever heard of any of these people? Or has anybody in the South ever heard tell them? Right. This sort of continual picking out of one person, like namely, um, uh, what do you call her, Arlene Foster, as if her father and by the way, I had total sympathy and understand exactly the trauma she went through. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to make this thing, Jude, there was a war going on. Uh, there was a police force that was 93% Protestant and Unionist. There was the B specials. There was sectarianism and discrimination. There was an unbelievable nasty place here. The IRA didn't come out of nowhere. It didn't come out of a vacuum. And see if people like uh, Stephen Collins are going to come out of this week in, week out, uh, with zero bounds and all the rest of it, I am not going to pay the least bit yeah. of attention. Well, right? because it, if, you're going to, if you're going to turn around and have a go with the IRA, but, you know, and they're going to turn around this rubbish, but uh, the loyalists are not in power. I do, it was a war situation. Mm. Well, in the, in the column, um, 
uh, it's quoted that Seamus McElwain's vision of a United Ireland is, is close to being realised. That's what Matt Carthy said. Yeah. And Stephen Collins then goes on from that and says that the fact of the matter is Sinn Féin was and remains the political mouthpiece of the IRA. Mm. What do you think? The IRA is gone. And, 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 you know, and, you know the, what, people like the Dublin Four, West Brits, like Stephen Collins, want people like Matt Carthy to apologise you know, for and to turn around, do a no one hires and say Martin McGuinness was wrong and say Jerry Adams was wrong and say every the hunger strikers were wrong and so on. That and almost that you know that 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 they were living in some nirvana up north and that they were just criminals and so on. Dude, it ain't going to happen. And by the way, I am not a member of Sinn Fein and I'm not an IRA supporter, mm -hmm. but it seems this sort of uh, one beat uh, mm -hmm. coverage from the Republic that it's beyond dishonest. It, you know, it's, uh, like, it's like accusing the Croats uh, as being the bad boys and the Serbians the good guys. That it's uh, you know that that, that, there were, that there was no circumstances that were which made those people rise up. Uh -huh. Well, it, there was two things that I noticed in that uh, column by Stephen Collins, and one was that he didn't seem to have like what well, he he believed he accepted implicitly and totally the fact that because Arlene Foster believed but was convinced that. Seamus, Michael, uh, Seamus McElwain, Michael Wayne was one of the group that shot her father. Yeah. That that was the case. Now, I, I don't think Where's Seamus McElwain Wayne was convicted of that. Otherwise, no. you wouldn't say she believed. Now, maybe she was right, but there, that wouldn't stand up in a court of law, no. and he doesn't have evidence for that. The other thing he says, this is Collins, he says that Sinn Féin was and remains a political mouthpiece of the IRA. Where's the evidence for that? Yeah, you, know, I think you, had a, you had a blog here quite recently. Was it Michal, Mac, Michal McDowell and so, or some uh, Fun Deal guy down south? It's still, it's obvious that um, Sinn Fein are still taking orders from uh, uh, ah. the IRA. And uh, it throws out this statement without one scintilla of evidence uh. to corroborate it. And it's published in a national newspaper. Uh. You know, and, I, and, like, I, and like it's feeding the certain. Uh, a group of people all the time, the menu that they want to ingest, you know, well, the, and like, what can you say? Well, Tommy, Mc, Tommy Gorman, who's a retired um, correspondent, RTE, the RTE, Northern yeah. correspondent, he said um, at the time they were talking about shadowy figures, he says, what are they talking about? They're not shadowy at all. These are guys, we see them around. These yeah. are guys that were in the IRA. They're now working with Sinn Féin as part of Sinn Féin. They're advisors, they're activists and so on. And that's what all parties do. They have people yeah. who are support, people who work for them. And by the way, they're not the just, shadows at all. No, and you see this this thing like and Tommy wouldn't exactly be known as a Tommy who would help bring the uh, the, the Queen no. and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, yeah. But you know that that whole thing it's uh, it really gets um it doesn't make sense. You know, there was a conflict and so much happened, and this con constant sort of one-sided, ridiculous reporting. And, you know, okay, Stephen Collins belongs to a generation like Stephen, must be hitting 70 at this stage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and his view on the North is very different from a lot of people nowadays. It comes down to, I suppose, in a way, whether or not people have a right to uh, commemorate people who were involved in violence, which yeah. is a bit, a bit daft because, I mean, Stephen Collins lives in a state where mm -hmm. every year they honour people who were engaged in violence in the 1916 on. Um, Dude, if you grew if you grew up in some place like Coal Island, where the UDR and before that the B Specials and the RUC came and beat the crap out of people, you weren't allowed to uh, you know St Patrick's Day parade. You were su such and such and such, and you grew up there and you decided I've had enough of this, you know, and you know you get shot dead. And a couple of years later, some of your friends say, "Look, I remember June Collins was a lovely fella. I'm going to commemorate him." You know. You're not. Are you not allowed to commemorate your own dead? Because <laughs> you know, you know, you, you know. It's almost a. Hey, Jude, by the way, just a quick one before we go. You know that uh, wall in Dublin. I yes. think you might have mentioned it. You know where they they have now put up uh, sort of tarpaulin or something yeah. in front of it and so on. What's your view on that? Well, I frankly think they should. It's there's a. I, I, well, first thing I would say is I think anybody's death is a tragedy. Somebody yeah. is going to be left behind. Somebody is going to be hurting, and the person's life is cut short, and that's bad. Yeah. But in the um, the struggle, what they call the uh, War of Independence, mm. the Black and Tan War, others call it, uh, there were people, Irish people, who were ranged against those who were trying to strike for independence. Yeah. I mean, the main source of opposition initially 
to the rising or the IRA then was Irish RIC, Royal Irish Constabulary. Constabulary. So the, 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 they, were, they were fighting against people who were themselves Irish men. I, I, I just, it doesn't make sense. I mean, if you, for example, if you see um, a cenotaph, you will yeah. see the names of local people or people who, were, who have died in the British Army and they're commemorated every November. You don't mm. see the names of Germans who fought and died uh, and very often were, you know, only did it because they were themselves right. themselves being patriotic. So mm. it's certainly not the custom to include uh, those uh, who have been. Can you imagine, and like, and, and the Polish underground, you know, the Jewish people who fought against the Nazis, if they were some putting up an, uh, up um, some sort of um, monument, and they put up uh, so, uh, soldiers who had joined the Nazis to, uh, you know, uh, Jewish people who had, um, uh, you know, fought fought with the nationalists. Not, uh, the Nazis to invade the sort of uh, the under uh, the um, mm. Polish underground. You can mm. imagine the sort of people going bananas. You know, mm -hmm. that's that should happen. So well, I think I don't think that's going to happen because uh, the very fact that they've had to put uh, tarpaulins on it and yeah. the fact that it was spray painted, the fact that somebody took a sledgehammer to it, uh, I mean, they're not simply not going to have it, whether they're right or wrong. But the reason I uh, no, but you, the reason I brought this up is exactly what you're talking about now about Stephen Collins. This sort of thing about commemorating the, the, the Stephen Collins of this world want us to commemorate those who shot dead uh, Irish people. He would have no problem with that wall, I'm certain of it. Mm -hmm. But if somebody from the North who's uh, maybe uh, has um, his friend has been shot dead years ago, he'll have a major problem with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all very, very somber stuff. Have you any jokes, yes. Pat? Any jokes no, to take no, people no, into no. the weekend? <laughs> Jed, I've still got a sore arm from where I got me. That's and, right and there. You're telling me. Tell the people about your sore arm. Both people about your sore arm. Are you suggesting they shouldn't no, get a vaccination? No, it's only, uh, only the legacy. They don't have a sore arm. Only legacy I've got for me. Oh, not at all, people. So <laughs> I, I, would, I would recommend totally getting the yeah. like, as It reminds me of the doctor years ago who said much, much better the vaccination than the, the virus. So I agree yeah. with him totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, there's an awful lot of people. I saw a figure for the for this. This isn't a joke. Uh, for I think it's for Britain. It's something like a quarter of people working on the front line are not taking the vaccine. Yeah. In the NHS. Well, do, 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 that's do, astonishing. Uh, oh, I did. If you go on social media, and you're not on it as much as I am, but if you really, some of it is unbelievable the anti-vax stuff out there is unbelievable the conspiracy theories right there that it uh, this vaccine it's uh, made from the cells of aborted babies that uh, bill gates and george soros uh, are leading this liberal thing to impose values where abortion and one globalist uh what else oh, dude, could keep going there's a whole lot of other things out there uh that uh, you know traditional values uh, mm. and this sort of uh, you know, woke generation want to impose rules yeah, on all yeah. the rest of us, and so on. You, you, you wouldn't believe it. And uh, what do you call it? the a uh, lot of in America uh, that the white race is under threat from all these uh, uh, people. And you, by, by the way, dude, uh, that was I think it was Trump says, Thank God for stupid people. <laughs> That's one thing we'll never have a shortage of. Present company <laughs> excluded, of course. <laughs> okay, Pat. Okay, Jim, catch you later. Talk to you again.